In this video, we'll dive into instrumentation amplifiers, special circuits built to fix the shortcomings of the simple difference amplifier. They've become one of the most practical and powerful applications of op amps. You can build one yourself using three op amps and some precision resistors. Or, if you want greater accuracy and convenience, you can use a dedicated instrumentation amplifier IC. Here's what makes them so useful. When you feed two sensor voltages into an instrumentation amplifier, it amplifies only the difference between them. And the best part? You can set the amplification, or gain, using just a single resistor. The name instrumentation amplifier comes from its main job. It's a circuit built for measuring instruments, where you need really clean, accurate signal amplification. Think of a temperature sensor, an ECG machine, or a strain gauge used in load cells and pressure sensors. All of these devices produce tiny signals that need to be amplified without distortion or error. That's where instrumentation amplifiers shine. At their core, instrumentation amplifiers are really just an upgraded version of the standard differential amplifier. In theory, both circuits do the same thing. They take two inputs, subtract one from the other, and then multiply the result by some gain. But before we dive deeper, if you're not yet familiar with op amps or differential amplifiers, I'd recommend checking out our earlier videos first. Links are in the description. Now, you might be wondering if a differential amplifier already does the job and it only uses one op amp and four resistors, why go through the trouble of building a more complex circuit like an instrumentation amplifier, which uses three op amps and seven resistors? The short answer is, the simple differential amplifier has some major drawbacks, specifically three of them. First, it has low input impedance. Second, the gain isn't easy to adjust. And third, it struggles to minimize the common mode gain. Let's go through these one by one. The first issue is low input impedance. You might remember from our op amp introduction video that an op amp by itself draws almost no current at its inputs. That's true. But in a differential amplifier, there's another path we can't ignore. Current can flow from the input through a resistor and down to ground. That means the signal source has to supply this extra current. If the sensor can't provide it, the input voltage, V1, ends up lower than it should be. This is called loading the source. To avoid loading, we want the amplifier's inputs to draw as little current as possible. In other words, we need high input impedance, and that's something a basic differential amplifier just doesn't give us. The second problem is that the gain isn't easy to adjust. In the differential amplifier lesson, we saw that the output equation at first looks like a long, messy expression. But if we set the resistor ratios so that RF over R1 equals R3 over R2, the messy terms cancel out and we're left with a nice, clean result. The output equals the gain times the input difference. In that case, the gain is simply RF divided by R1. Here's the catch. If you want to change the gain, you can't just replace one resistor, like RF or R1. To keep the ratios balanced, you have to adjust at least two resistors together. That's awkward and inconvenient. It would be much better if we could control the gain by adjusting just a single resistor. And the third problem is poor common mode rejection. In theory, the output should just be the gain multiplied by the difference between the two inputs. That's the ideal case. But in reality, op amps aren't perfect. Any voltage that appears equally on both inputs, called the common mode voltage, sneaks into the output as an unwanted error. This is what we call the common mode effect. On paper, the math shows that the common mode gain follows this equation. If the resistor ratios are perfectly matched, RF over R1 equals R3 over R2, then the common mode gain becomes zero. That sounds perfect, right? But here's the problem. In practice, resistors always come with tolerances. Even a tiny mismatch, say 0.1%, is enough to throw off the ratio and produce measurable common mode output. That means we can't completely eliminate common mode gain in a simple differential amplifier. 
I've covered this in more detail in our video on common mode rejection ratio, so check that out if you haven't already. The main takeaway here is that with a basic differential amplifier, it's very hard to get rid of this effect. And as a result, the output often isn't as clean or accurate as we'd like. To overcome these drawbacks, engineers use an improved version of the op-amp circuit, the instrumentation amplifier. It neatly fixes all the issues we just talked about. It offers extremely high input impedance, the gain can be set with just a single resistor, and ideally, the common mode gain drops to zero. The circuit itself uses three op-amps and a handful of carefully chosen resistors, all designed to overcome the weaknesses of the simple differential amplifier. Most of the time, you don't need to build one yourself. You can buy an instrumentation amplifier as a ready-made 8-pin IC. For example, consider the popular INA128 instrumentation amplifier. Pin 4 and pin 7 supply power. Pin 5 is the reference pin, which is usually tied to ground. Pins 2 and 3 are the inverting and non-inverting inputs, while pin 6 is the output. And just like we want, the output is simply the gain multiplied by the difference between the two input signals. The gain is set by a single resistor connected between pins 1 and 8. That's it. No juggling multiple resistors to keep ratios balanced. This design gives us three major advantages. First, the input impedance is extremely high, so the amplifier draws almost no current from the sensor. Second, the gain is easily adjustable with just one resistor. And third, the common mode rejection ratio is so high that for all practical purposes, we can ignore common mode errors altogether. Now, let's dig into how the instrumentation amplifier actually achieves all this. If you're familiar with the simple differential amplifier, the second stage of the instrumentation amplifier should look very familiar. It's basically the same thing, just a differential amplifier. Back in our earlier lesson, we saw that if the resistor ratios are perfectly balanced, the circuit cleanly subtracts the two inputs. The differential gain is set by that ratio, and the common mode gain ideally drops to zero. In an instrumentation amplifier, this balance is built right in. The resistors R1, R2, R3 and RF are all made equal, so the math works out beautifully. The differential gain is 1, and the common mode gain is 0. If we label the inputs to this differential amplifier as V1 and V2, then the output is simply V2 minus V1. The gain is 1, and there are no common mode issues. Let's keep this as our first equation. We'll need it later. So, the second stage of the instrumentation amplifier reliably subtracts the two input voltages, and by doing that, it effectively solves the common mode voltage problem. The real advantage here is precision. In commercial instrumentation amplifier ICs, the resistors are laser trimmed, so their values match almost perfectly. That kind of accuracy is nearly impossible to achieve if we try to build a differential amplifier ourselves using ordinary resistors. That still leaves us with two more issues from the differential amplifier. Low input impedance and the hassle of adjusting the gain with multiple resistors. So how does the instrumentation amplifier fix these? First, look at the two op amps at the input. The signals feed directly into them. No extra branches, no current being drained away through resistors. Back in my op-amp introduction video, we learned that an op-amp input draws almost no current. It just senses the voltage. In technical terms, these op-amps are acting as buffers, and buffers provide very high input impedance. That means the instrumentation amplifier doesn't load the signal source at all. Now there's still one last issue to solve, how to make the gain easy to adjust. The instrumentation amplifier handles this beautifully with just a single resistor. Suppose the outputs of the two input buffers are V1 and V2. Remember the golden rules of op amps. With negative feedback, the op amp adjusts its output so that both inputs sit at the same voltage. 
that means this node must be at VA and this one at VB. And since op-amp inputs draw almost no current, the same current flows through the entire resistor chain between V1 and V2. Let's call that current IG. We can write IG equals V1 minus V2 divided by R1 plus RG plus R1. But we can also describe IG as the current through the middle resistor, RG. IG equals VA minus VB over RG. If we combine these two expressions and solve, we find a direct relationship between V1 minus V2 and VA minus VB. That gives us our second equation. Now, when we plug this back into the overall amplifier equation, the output V out comes out as the gain multiplied by the input difference. And here's the key point. The gain depends directly on RG. By changing just this one resistor, we can easily adjust the gain. In fact, the overall differential gain of the instrumentation amplifier is simply the gain from stage 1 multiplied by the gain from stage 2. This simplifies to 1 plus 2 times R1 over RG. Because the gain depends on only one resistor, RG, we could even make it a variable resistor, so adjusting the gain becomes as easy as turning a knob. And with that, we've solved our final drawback. And that's it. The instrumentation amplifier solves all the major drawbacks of the simple differential amplifier, and it does so with a clear two-stage design. The first stage uses two input buffers, giving the circuit a very high input impedance and preventing source loading. The second stage is a perfectly balanced differential amplifier, which cancels out common mode signals while providing a differential gain of 1. And finally, the overall gain is controlled by a single resistor, RG, making it simple and flexible to adjust. And that wraps up our look at instrumentation amplifiers. Producing these videos takes a lot of time and effort, and we really do need your support to keep going. If you'd like to help, please consider joining us on Patreon. The link is in the description. And of course, don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more clear and practical explanations of electronics.